Thursday. Welcome to the Long Island Breakfast Club show. I got to tell you something. Do you know when I start the show up behind the bar? That means I had a rough day. So we have one of my new bartenders, Hannah. She's going to teach us how to make a drink, which I really need a super strong drink. So I asked her, Hannah, what kind of drink should I have? And Hannah, welcome to the Long Island Breakfast Club show. Welcome to Club G's. And so you have to tell us what kind of a shot or what kind of a drink or what are you going to make right now? Okay, so we're going to be making a green tea mixture right now, and right. then we are going to be using the scotch, the peach blossom, and the chips, triple yes, sack. I love that. So um, make it super strong. So okay, <laughs> just pour one in, you know, yeah, pour like maybe four or five shots of each other. We got a shot of the scotch. A shot. That's good, that's good. Oh. You're trying to kill us, I think. <laughs> but you know what, it's all worth it. Because she was, didn't have an appointment with the car. Okay. Well, anyway, very with that. I yeah, yeah, but Susan got it. You know. Yeah. And we made friends with the two other security guards. Get to lower that. And um, I got in. Yeah. And I got my license temporarily. So I have finally. Awesome. Congrats, my license congrats, has congrats. been. Uh, Suspended? Suspended. <laughs> okay. Not because of anything I did. Right. Just a lot. Because of COVID. I didn't get it. Don't say COVID. COVID had nothing to do with it. It's what? just because of your laziness. No, you go, I'm not yes. never lazy. And that's the truth. Nobody ever says I'm lazy. You know that. No, not no, lazy. no, no. You know what? People have a tendency Pay to work. just, none of the people have a tendency to just say, hey, you know what? There's no rush. I don't exactly. have whatever. And, and people do that. You know that. So now I have a license. So aren't you glad about that? Yes, I'm very happy. Oh, um, wait, you know what? The most important thing is that you got a new car. Well, that's next. But, you know, I got a new car. I started to drive it today. Did you? Yes, but I need you I'm to so, train I'm, me. I'm, 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 very, very, I'm very proud of you. Very, very proud I'm, of you. I had the heat on. I said, where's the air conditioning? Where the <laughs> There's so many buttons. I never had no, a new car in my life. No, it is. Really? No. It's not that bad. Is it, you really, you really, do you find it to be that difficult? No. No. Oh. But, you know, I do need some instruction. Because, you know, when you're used to an old-fashioned car, you right. When I saw the key, I almost shipped. I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> so we have a great guest today. Her name is Jacqueline Harunian. Your, your name is so, like, flowy. It's I like love my it. my mother's name. I love that name, yes. Jacqueline. I Thank love you. that name. And um, it's welcome. Look, I really, you know, it's uh, the first time I've met your partner here, and I know you, Valentina, for a long time, and uh, mostly through networking. And it really is great to be here. I really appreciate the opportunity. And I'm a little concerned that I'm going to make um, the mood even worse because my topic that I have to talk about is not the most pleasant. But okay, we'll see. Okay, we'll so let's hear this. So we'll try to keep it really positive. Good. We'll we try to keep it positive. Well, you, yeah. me, I I listen, I gotta I tell you. <laughs> no, 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 because I'm, I'm very, very big on positivity, so everybody knows that. But yeah. it's, okay. it's okay. What do you I mean, you know, I'm a, I'm a family law attorney. I'm, yeah. I'm my partner in a firm. I've been doing this for a very long time. and. Family law, uh, divorce is, is not a pleasant topic. I mean, it ranks up there with like tax audits and yeah, colonoscopies and unpleasant things. But <laughs> there is a good one. I like that. Colonoscopies and divorces. Or, or root canal. I don't know what's <laughs> worse, a root canal. Or a, but you know what? It, it, I, I'd like to keep it 
positive. Yes. Uh, I, I have advice to share about, so hopefully positive. Yeah, but look, Keep it positive. this is the real world. Yeah. People get divorced. Yes. They get separated. Correct. They do, what is that, mediation? Oh, absolutely. It, it happens. So sure. you know what? This is life. It is and on this life. show, we talk about everything. That's great. Except religion and politics. Right. We do very like rarely. No, I mean, we do. I mean, but I just don't care. We just don't right. like to talk about it. Well, especially just, now. Yeah. It's, it's very polarized right now. Yes. So yeah. first, uh, everyone that comes on my show gets Italian bread nice. because we break bread with everyone. And these rolls are from Salatori's. I stopped there. There's a nice Italian restaurant on El Elma Road. Thank you want to stop so on your way out. That and you have to break that bread with someone at home that you love or you if don't. If you don't love, well, in yeah. your case, divorce, all the divorcees, divorcettes, whatever you yeah. call them. But that's <laughs> part of my culture <laughs> and uh, yeah. Rex culture. We're both Italian. It's beautiful. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, we do that on every show, so we have this thing now with Italian bread. I love that. That's thank, great. You. thank you. So, and then I would like to, you know, oh, say, like say yes. Thank, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank we you, have a great drink you. tonight. You're going to be Don't make a mess of my thing. No. <laughs> Greg loves the table to be perfect, which I do too. Yeah. Every now and then somebody makes a spill. Thank you, Bartender. Yeah. Yeah. Bartender, new bartender. Thank, thank you, Debbie. Thank, thank you, Hannah. Really and and Hannah came all the way out, I swear to you. Know, from like, where? Where do you live? From all the way out. Fuck from me, from me down. Yeah, fuck me down. That's right. So You'll love us. I think, she, I think she's got it. Everybody love. loves us here, so it's delicious. Thank you. Yes, it's very good. So, yes, you used your coaster, which that's a big thing. That's right. Greg. That's right. That's Greg right. Greg is a little fussy, but I don't have Yeah, you got so. a coaster right here. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So, thank you for coming. And um, let's go way back, I guess, uh, you know. Well, before we even start, I have to... Uh, oh, yeah. We have today to. is National Fluffer Nutter Day. Yes. Fluffer Nutter. Wait, wait. Fluffer Nutter is a nutter. Isn't that like that, the, the, mush the marshmallow? Yes. That's what it is, right? Correct. Okay. It's marshmallow, chocolate, nuts. Right. You know, nuts. We always have nuts on the show. Yeah, I know. You love nuts. Because you've got nuts, so <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> oh, Lord. Here we go. Here we go. Here we we have go. a lot of fun here. I can tell. Yeah. And that's <laughs> why never, that's never why we're so moment. popular because we can talk about anything. Okay, <laughs> so it's National Fluff another Day. That's right. But it's also something else, right? What else let me say? Let me see. It's uh pierogi. Oh I, that's one thing I love. Pierogies. National pierogi. Pierogies are my thing. That's a Polish thing. Uh, yeah. I have, yes. Are you Polish? I'm not Polish, but um yeah, my children used to have a babysitter that was Russian, and she made pierogies frequently. Wait, it's one of really? Like, yeah, pierogies, because she was Russian. Uh, wait, pierogies? Pierogies. Yeah, that's pierogies. similar yeah. to pierogies, yeah. right? Right, right, right. Yeah. So did you eat it with applesauce or sour cream? You know, she would make it with meat and onions, and oh. sometimes with potatoes. Yeah, that's good. And, uh, that's that, that, that I think, yeah, I mean, it depends on how you like it. Yeah. Do you I know how to make it? I do know how to make it. Yes. Wow. Oh, wait, 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 she would make big batches of it and put it in the freezer. And as a working mom, they were really one of the best things to pull out of the freezer and eat. Yeah, that's it. Also, you can make it with fried break, fried bacon crumbles. Sure. Onions. Green yeah, onions. I think mushrooms and onion was very, very big. Yeah. Yes. So. Yeah. So, so anyway. At least that was the positive part. Now we get to the now, depressing part where well, she was getting ready yeah, to say it. We, we try to be better. <laughs> okay. Really, I'm looking forward to this right now. Yeah. <laughs> Like the bearer of bad news. No, yeah, no, no, it's not. It's not. No, she tried. Hey, it's, it's reality. And birthday, we have Patrice. No, is it a birthday? Yeah, we're going out tomorrow. Oh, honey, happy birthday, Patrice. Patrice, I gotta, Patrice, I gotta say, she's a wonderful, wonderful woman. Yes. And we're very, very happy for you. And happy birthday, and many, many more. And she's from Bucket List Tours. I don't know if you yeah. know of her. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's, she's a big supporter yeah. of the Breakfast Club. Fantastic. And her company is Bucket List Tours. And yes. She'll make the list, you make the list on your bucket, and she'll plan the event. Right. So, go ahead. Uh, you know, she's got to jump in on this one here. <laughs> so, so, Patricia, my friend, my, my dear friend, happy birthday, and we'll all be at the uh, winery tomorrow. 
all 20 of us. Really? Yes, well, from the, the angels, Long Island Angels. Are the yes. angels going to be there? Yes, so okay. we're looking forward to it, and uh, we have right. some parts for you. Oh, my God. So it'll be fun. I'm not driving. Good, I know. You should be driving. <laughs> I have a really big event going on. Uh, matter of fact, maybe your husband and yourself and uh, do you have black clothing? All black. Absolutely. You look like what <laughs> woman? Bit. I was gonna say what woman doesn't have that? I think it's in New York. Place. Hannah, you know you're gonna be yeah. there too. Matter of fact, it's on yeah. Sunday. It's at Freeport. And what I do is um, every year I'm the lieutenant governor for Kiwanis, and it's always a fundraiser, and it's for a pediatric line, it's it's for. Uh, Camp Kiwanis, everything that we do in Kiwanis is to help everyone. Right. So um, this is for Franklin Square, and um, we go out on a, a boat. We don't go out in the ocean because people, so people don't get sick. Mm -hmm. But you're in the canal. Nice. And we have music, you get all you can eat, and you can just dance in one spot. Nice. You know, so everything's safe, and everybody will have and their mask on, and it's yeah. outside. So it's really, really, it's supposed to be really, really nice, man. Is it supposed to be nice on Sunday? I, I think heard so. Saturday is going to be beautiful, but I think maybe Sunday is yeah, going to be so nice. Yeah, so we're excited too. because okay. originally he, he does a white party, but... It's all white, but you can't put white, you can't wear white after Labor Day. Right. I mean, I don't know who came up with that, to be honest with you. You know, yeah. but I've been told you could wear a white sweater, right. but you can't wear white pants. I mean, I don't know how many guys wear white pants. So we made him change it. So, black. and I figured, I said, well, let's make it in black all black. black. Right. Yeah, black and you know what? A lot, a, a lot more people... Well, a lot of people didn't want to go because, well, mostly women, a lot of women didn't want to show in white. Because everything like, shows through. Yeah, why would you stop? That's not true. Cause lace. Everything shows through, yeah. What do you when mean, you lace? wear white, things show through, especially if you have a little chunky. You look bigger in white. Don't you think that? Who's looking at you? We're on a boat. Well, we're we're hoping, the time. We're hoping people are looking at you. I mean, oh, you're going on a boat, people are going to look at you, say hello, say you look nice, yeah, you hopefully. Know. You can't go anywhere anyway, with this woman. Oh, black you're me. does look better on a woman and a man. Don't you think? <laughs> Good. Let me hear this one. Right. Please. Uh, I think the general consensus is that black clothing. <laughs> you see, more this is an attorney day. answering you right yeah, now. It can never be just straight yes or no. It's well, let's see. Let's well, weigh let the options. Say, I, 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 <laughs> I wear more black um, more frequently than white for many of the obvious reasons. Exactly. Yes, I agree. Exactly. Do you really? I mean, yeah, it's flattering. It you know doesn't show stage but you know what? You know what? Slimming. It's chic. And it's you know, chic. But, and but, but you know what? Eventually, you're gonna see. You know, I always say that. Not for anything. You know, my friends, I, I, they, I do tease them, and, and I always say, you know, men. They say men are lies when you're going out to whatever. But I said, women, your lies as soon as you leave the house, because. You don't look like that when you wake up in the morning. I mean, just you, maybe you do. No, you don't. <laughs> Think about it. Your hair's all done up. You have lipstick, the foundation, the outfit on. You wear the spanks, double spanks, whatever they wear. So right then and there, you're not who you seem to really be. Because when you wake up in the morning time, that's not the same person that you met the night before. I mean, do you understand? I'm not saying everybody, I mean, but I do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah, but it's a matter of degree, because I think some women are very high maintenance, if you want right. all of that. Yes. And so are some men. Right. Like, you know, if you didn't take care of your beard and your facial hair, you would look very different. Right. So you do personal grooming, too. Right. Oh, no, no, I don't know. Everyone listen. has, it's a matter I, of degree. Right. Listen, how far you go. Like we always said, I'm low maintenance, so. Right. The fact You're that you changed it to black is great, because I have <laughs> tons of black outfits, because I love black. Afters. Because it makes you look more flattering. Yes, okay. exactly. I got you. Anyway, all right, so. All right, let's get to the depressing part right now. And then after that, we're going to have to get back on a positive note. I'm yeah, it's not, not, no. We're happy, happy to have you. And Definitely. we want to know. Because, I, you know, I have a lot of members and a lot of people that are going through you know, separation and divorce. I, I have information to share. I'm hoping it's going to be interesting and helpful to people listening. It is. Um, yes, uh, you know, going through a family crisis or a transition is not a fun time, you know, especially in a longer relationship, especially if they're young children. However, like everything terrible in life, in, you know, whether it's an illness or a pandemic or anything you could name, it's not forever. It's a temporary phase. And the question is, how much of a toll is it going to take on you and your family uh, financially, emotionally, how much time? And, and some of that is up to you. Some of that is up to people that go through the process. So. Uh, I am a fan of uh, simplified, dignified divorce. Which is great. Uh, wait, 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 what is it? Wait. Simplified, simplified, dignified? 
if you, if you give okay, me my, I've, go, I've, I've actually, and let me just start by way of introduction. I am a partner at a family law firm. Okay. We're, in, we're in Great Neck. We're one of the largest matrimonial firms uh, in the New York area. We have nine attorneys. And the name of the firm is Whistleman, Harunian, and Associates. And I've been doing this for a very long time. I've been practicing law for almost 25 years. And um, I wrote a book a few years ago. I'm gonna hold it up. Uh, it's called Divorce Reality Check. And I wrote this book, uh, and I've sold a lot of copies. It's available in bookstores and on an Amazon. Because it really is a little bit of an insider's view of how uh, divorce really plays out in the courts, what can be done to simplify the process, and I call it reality check because a lot of times uh, people go through the process uh, really engaged in the whole culture of divorce, that it has to be adversarial, and you need to go to the most aggressive lawyer, and you need to fight in court, when the reality is that's not necessarily the best path. There are certain um, certainties that uh, really make it much easier to get through the process, and why would you fight in court if you know what the outcome is gonna be because you understand what the laws are, and the responsibility of every person going through divorce, it's caveat emptor, buyer beware. It really is on you to understand the laws, to go to the right advisors, to make sure you know how the law affects the facts of your case, and then to make decisions from there. Because if I told you that most mothers and fathers are gonna get joint custody, that's what's going on in court today, the vast majority of working parents are gonna end up with some type of joint custody. Why would you give all your money to a lawyer and fight for sole custody? You're not gonna get it. Really? In the vast yeah. majority yeah. of cases. The same thing with child support, spousal support. The laws are gender neutral. There are formulas in place. Any good matrimonial lawyer can probably give you a heads up of exactly how much child support you're gonna pay, exactly how much spousal support you're entitled to, in my view, it's very foolish to go to court and hope to get a better outcome. In reality, and this is really part of the reality check, the lawyers make a lot of money. The more a case is litigated, the more the lawyer is gonna get, and the less you and your spouse are gonna get. And if you can't get that, and you're gonna end up blaming your lawyers and the judges after the fact, in my opinion, that's on you. You've made that decision, and in my view, maybe you haven't made the best decision. So. I'm all about telling uh, up front. clients up front. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, in my firm, we do go to court quite a bit. There are some cases that have to be litigated. Sure. And I'm happy to talk about that. They include domestic violence. Right. They include uh, missing assets. Sometimes you need to go to a judge because people are not cooperating. But again, those are the minority of cases. I really think more people should consider out-of-court processes, which include negotiation and mediation, right. mm -hmm. you're gonna end up with a cheaper, friendlier, quicker divorce. And to be positive, Greg, <laughs> Here best, we go. the best divorce is one that's over, one that allows you to move forward with your life, move on to happier next chapters, hopefully not be bitter enemies with your ex, because I am a very big fan of co-parenting. I do a tremendous amount of coaching for parents regarding co-parenting. and. Bottom line is, it would be great for children to have co-parents that get along. Absolutely. That can stand on so the soccer field. That can stand so on the soccer field. true. I, no, listen, I, I, I was married before, divorced, we're very good friends, we get right. along. You know, this one I always say, if, if you ever get divorced, I said, all I would do is just get my vehicle and just give me the clothes. I said, you could have everything. That's right. Because you know what, she stood by me, she did a lot. So you know what, I don't want you to make a dollar on me. I really don't, because you guys, you know what, because everybody always said, and it's true, because the attorneys are the ones that make a killing, and the more they know you have, you have the more they charge, and that, that really bought, not, not, I wouldn't but, go that far, no, 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 however, no, just saying a lot, yes, no, no, a lot of attorneys that I know, yeah. yeah, you know, if you turn around and you're worth, I mean, you don't have anything, you can get a divorce, they say, I'll get tested 700, 800, whatever, whatever they say, you have millions, you know what, even if you agree, you guys really okay, but I'm gonna test that theory because people that have millions are good with money. They're good right. savers. Those people generally have prenups or are motivated to stay out of court. Believe it or not, and I can prove this to you because we have a very high volume practice, it's people with less money that fight harder and pay really? more lawyers. Absolutely, because people with money want to keep their money. Right. And and you know, there are certain guidelines that are very, very universal. So whether you're marital estate is 100,000 or 10 million, and we have both of those in our practice, obviously. Right. 
the costs can be very similar because in many times you're talking about a 50-50 split or uh, you know, some of it's separate property, which means it was prior to the marriage, some of it was during the marriage. You know, it's all dollars and cents. Yeah, you, know what, you know what kills me it's, about... It's the, the formula's not complicated. You know, and listen, don't get me wrong, you go to school in Peru, you, you, you guys go for, you know, for, I mean, you guys go to school for a long time, you guys have to learn trillions of laws, Roe versus Wade, I mean, whatever it is. And you sit there, and honestly, for me to turn around and to give a retainer fee, just say, $50,000, just say, $50,000, you give a retainer fee, and say we get divorced, one, two, three. Mm -hmm. The chances of getting anything back from that retainer oh, fee is... I'm going to correct you. I, you know what, listen, okay, so I, I, just tell you. I wish I could have brought some of my attorney friends, I swear to you. <laughs> no, I mean, no, no, Greg, they go, the I chance... had to talk. <laughs> Let me correct you. Matrimonial yeah. ret retainer agreements are fully, different. fully refundable. They're very different from litigation retainers. Uh -huh. For family law and divorce clients, by law, in right. New York State, it's a refundable retainer. So, when I get a $10,000 or $20,000 right. retainer, uh, what I'll get right. some more soon, uh, when we get them, if the case settles early, we do have to refund But how it. early do you, would you say? I mean, just, in that, just give me an example. I didn't the say... The retainer is refundable okay. at any time. We all have the same matrimonial retainer right. agreement. So, if the case... A lot so, of if you went to court, you say, for instance, yeah. you went to... Hi, boom, I gave you this, I, I explained to you, blah, 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 okay, now you're going to represent me. Right. We go to court one time. Right. And blah, 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 saying we might have to go to court again. Right. What if it's, out of that 50000 you guys will turn around and you'll say, well, I had to negotiate this, I had to this. I'm oh. not saying you, not no, to no, say no, no, you, I but, but that's why, I mean, like my attorney friend said, the chances of you getting your, that's I mean, true. you'll get partial. Let you know, me they explain say, that, because it's actually one of the things I address in the book, and it's, very good to understand because, first of all, matrimonial clients have special protections under the law that other clients of lawyers don't have. Okay, so this is not a contingency fee case or a case where a client can get a bonus or a huge fee for doing very little work. That's not the way it works. Matrimonial clients have to receive a bill every 30 to 60 days. We have to account for our time pretty much down to the minute. And I have clients that pay me a lot of money and then two weeks later say, I'm reconciling. Right. I have to give their money back. Or they'll say, I changed my mind. Right. I want to go in a different direction. You know, this is something where the funds are very protected for matrimonial clients. The cases you're describing are really for very different scenarios. Right. And of course, there are lawyers that are not honest in their right. billing. I was going to say, and, that's, and okay. that's a fact. I mean, you have the good and bad in everybody. Absolutely. Get me wrong. I'm not and it just and it, and it frustrates me. You turn around and he would turn around and he said, I don't want to mention who, but I know very well, but yeah. a friend of mine's a multi-trillionaire. He goes, Greg, I swear to you, he went to court, say five times, we took care of everything on the back end, meaning the wife yeah. himself. And that was $300,000. Wow, and he turned, look, he goes, when he answered the phone, billable hours, and he charges $375 an hour. So when you pick up that phone, it's, it, it's right there. Okay. And meanwhile, he's like, Greg, I don't get it. Okay. And a lot of people know who this guy is, but I don't want to mention, but I'm just saying, not everybody is like that. There's I do no, understand no, that. First of all, a $300,000 case went to court more than five times. That's right. There must have been a hearing, there must have been a trial, but that's not even... Right, right, right. That type of billing, first of all, there have to be bills that explain every right. minute of the time. These right. are matrimonial right. cases. Right. And in the, in the cases, and there are cases where clients feel like they've been ripped off or right. overbilled, there's an arbitration, a fee arbitration process there's a, there's in every county that, right. that is free, that is reasonably effective. You fill in forms, you request arbitration. You, you, you fill in the bar association. They don't, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, 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 like I said, I'm not saying you guys, guys, I, I'm not saying you guys just are saying anything general, like that. General. It's just in general, it's just, you know, you I turn see. around and, and it's like, uh, what is it, an accident. I remember an accident, I fell through. Yeah. You know, do you remember Talbot's? Yeah. Okay. It's a cool Well, all right. I was driving to about 20 something, 25 years ago. I was driving and I parked my car. I got out and I, do you know the, the gates when you walk on the sidewalk? Okay. They open up and you go down the stairs? Okay. okay. Well, I was walking, going to the store and I fell through. So I grabbed, I just, you know, as I was falling through, I just put my hand on something, which my hand went, a lock went through my hand. Oh because the door collapsed. Now, I'm not into the suing thing. I've never been. Okay. And I gotta tell you, what really got me angry was, people are watching me. Like, I'm hanging, and it's like 20 feet below. And I get myself up. Now, I, I, I just grab my hand like this, I walk into Tappets, and I say to the guy, 
buddy, I just need a towel, I need a towel. I said, you know, I fell through. And I wasn't thinking of police, ambulance, whatever. I was getting ready to go on a call, and it was a nice job going to Westchester. And I'm like, that's a $300 call. So I'm not missing this. I said, I'm just gonna wrap my hand up and just drive, I'll be fine. And as I walked in, the guy was so nasty with me. I mean, so nasty, get out of my store. I was like, buddy, I just fell. And I said, I just need a towel. I didn't ask you a first thing, whatever. Make a long story short. I ended up suing. Okay? But the thing was, I know they say like in accidents, they take a third or whatever it was. But this guy, the, one of the attorneys really didn't do much. And for him to get the amount of money that he got, right. it was like almost half. Because okay. it was a sliding scale. Maybe he did something of a sliding scale. Okay. I don't know. But anyway, all I know is... He had everything documented, and so this is, and it really bothered me, it really did. I understand, and know. listen, but just again, I don't want to keep defending lawyers. Right. Some no, of let's really, talk more about Some of them yeah. don't really deserve it, but if, what you described was a contingency fee situation. Right. It's not at all like that for divorce cases, and it's akin to like a real estate broker who right. shows a house one time and gets 6%, mm -hmm. and there are other real estate brokers that work for many years and get very small commissions, so it right. is a little bit of a, a luck of the draw. Right. Many personal injury attorneys don't make you know, it takes a lot to hit it big with one case. Yes. So again, I don't want to defend right, that. Right, 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 right. It right. is what it is. I'm sorry that you went through that. Yeah. It sounds like it was terrible. And it was, I'm glad but you, got you know money. what? It's over and done with today. Yeah, I'm glad that you got the money you got. That's I have to say before we start, yes, okay. I have to give a couple shout outs to Stacy Rosemary. How are you, sweetie? Kathy, love you. Susan, Francis, thank you so much. Thanks for congratulating me, Francis. Um, oh, wow, he was quite a bit here. All right, Elizabeth. Uh, Robin, hello Robin, Elizabeth, another Elizabeth, Matthew, Debbie, Brenda, hello love love, that's the governor that, that, that uh, you have to address, Johnny from California, Johnny, I'm sorry we haven't spoken from Stanford, and I know we haven't had a chance to really, really talk, I miss you, love you, send my love to everybody, and I know we'll talk soon, uh, wait, 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 just, uh, Josh, how are you, Saba, what, well, your prince really, Yafa says hello, uh, the pronunciation's a little rough for me, okay. <laughs> but you're on here, you're on the feed. Hello, hello. Hello, <laughs> okay. everybody. And uh, thanks for watching. So, so uh, what I want to talk about is I see you have like, you know, like this map, which is yeah. great. Thank Adjust you. your mind, accept, go to the judge. What is, yes. what is that like? So this is you a, go to the judge? or So this is a little handout that I created. It's um, great. And so this is what you give every client? This is what I'm starting to get every client. Oh, this will actually be an addendum to the next edition of my book. I'm actually right. updating my book because the law keeps changing. But these are the basic steps in a New York divorce case. And this is a handout. Uh, you can see it on my Facebook page. My office will, ha will give it out to anyone who asks. And I'm going to leave a couple of copies. Thank yes, you. we'll give it out on meeting. And so, you know, it is very important for people to decide. And this is what we were talking about before, that clients have the ability to take matters into their own hands. And it really is all about understanding how to get through a legal process in New York and in almost throughout the United States. Um, the divorce process is an adversarial process, which means that it's a fight. Yes. And it can get nasty and it can certainly get expensive. And what I have outlined here are all of the steps, starting from the very first moment where you decide that you want a breakup. That's great. The I like process, that's good. I like that. You know, co-parenting, and then. This step right here, smack in the middle, is filing in court. And all of the steps it takes to reach the finish line once you're in court, including up to 10 conferences, including depositions, including motions, and then finally through trial and appeal. Why would you want to go through that process? When you could just mediate. When you can keep the case out of court if possible. Right? Are you guys are mediators also? We're or mediators and okay. negotiators. Right. We also go to court. We also handle appeals. I mean, again, there are some cases that have to go to court. My, right. Our attorneys are in court frequently. But that doesn't mean the average client that has a house, that has a pension, their income is on the books. We know exactly what the numbers are going to turn out to be. There's no reason why cases like that can't be resolved amicably. My practice is referral-based. Most of my clients come to me because they've heard about yeah. the fact that well, I'm you're here. very popular. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but I, I really know for a fact that it's just good business to resolve cases sure. um, at a reasonable price point with people feeling like they got very good service and resolve their case. By contrast, the cases that we handle where we bill 100,000 or more, those people are scarred for life after yeah. that case. Well, I have a They're question. angry and upset. Now, you know, after looking at this, you know, I have a lot of, I know a lot of people that contemplate 
divorce, but don't do it. Sure. But part of the reason is, I hate to say this, but the other half believes that they're not, the wife is not entitled to half of everything. How do you deal with that? Because I happen to know a few people that are well, dealing with yeah, that. Quite a few people, you know, and as a matter of fact, I don't mean to, to cut you off, I have a very yeah. good friend going through, uh, I mean, the guy's worth like, say, 25 million, sure. but they, they didn't have it. I mean, they, she was always a stay-at-home mom. She right. took care of the children. And now that they're getting divorced after 20-something years, right. he's like, wait a second. You just stayed home with the kids. Doesn't and, matter. And, so, no, that's and, and, a and, now I don't think, and that I don't think is fair. I don't I, know that I it's fair. Feel, I can right. understand. I mean, I work hard. I can understand right. why it doesn't feel fair to share. Because he felt that he's the one that was out every is, day. Marriage you know? is viewed as an economic partnership. You know, if he had a wife who stayed home, and hello, he stayed married to her for a long time, right. so there must have been benefits, right? I right. imagine. Absolutely. She and raised a parent family. Right. Him and, and maybe he's part of the reason why he was so successful. Um, without without a prenup, the law is... Well, they didn't have anything. They, they didn't have anything. Well, that's how it normally is. That's what happened to Jeff Bezos, too. When he met his wife, uh, you know, they didn't have anything. Yeah, However, so you recommend that you have a prenup even if you I recommend nothing? prenups for everybody. Everyone right. should have a prenup. Let me just tell you something, though. Today, we are at a point where probably one out of three people that walk into my office are women that earn more than their spouse or the same. Things are changing. It's not, you know, obviously men still earn most of the income, most of them are more uh, forceful in their careers, and it is still true that women are give up careers to stay home with children, but that is changing. The law of New York is based on, it's not a community property state. Not everything is divided 50-50. What I can say to your friend, and for a lot of high net worth, families that come to our office because it's almost like a family transition. Yes. Then you do a lot of estate planning as part of divorce planning. That's that's what happened with Jake Bezos and his wife. A lot of assets went into trust for right. children. So right. you have millions of dollars and you're getting up there in years. Um, it, it does feel a little bit fair sometimes that some of the assets are distributed to children right. or put in trust. And yes, of course, a wife who gave up her career uh, you know, is entitled to her fair share of assets. Right, but do you that actually yeah, do you actually sit down and talk to the other mate and say, look, this is the real deal. I'm just misinformed. You know, we, we have a free consultation in our office, and, and many matrimonial lawyers offer a free consultation, and obviously some don't. But it really is an education process. The more you understand what the process entails, the more fair it will seem, uh, especially when you consider fighting against the inevitable because certainly your wealthy friend can go to court for years and fight against the Which is such a right, right, But that's yeah, going to make right. the lawyers See, right, exactly. It's going to make his children upset at him. It's going to prolong an angry, negative process. And ultimately, if the wife ends up with $10 million, she's not going to go blow it. She's going to end up leaving it to her kids too, right? right? Yeah. I mean, there is a, a certain fairness. he feels, he goes, well, the kids are set. I have everything, the kids, you know. And I sat there and I, and I know them both. And I said, not for anything. You probably wouldn't have had a family. Right. You know, you have great children. Sure. And you know what I whether you feel she's worth it or not, yep. he goes, Well, I'll give her what she what I feel that she's but worth. But that's not right. And I'm like, how that's do you do that? You know, no, of course not, of course but, not. But you know, I will tell you that sometimes I deal with situations like that and let's say I represent the wife and let's say her husband really is resistant to giving a lot. Right. So then the the, the conversation becomes how much do you really feel you need to right. be happy? Uh, do you, uh, are you okay with accepting a little bit less than 50%? Right. So you, right. And oftentimes the answer is yes. Because no one wants to fight in court unless right. they have to. Right. Why would you go through that unless it's necessary? And it really is about sort of calming down, having right. lawyers represent both sides, and, and trying to find a middle ground, which is really what mediation is. What right. can we agree on? What is, is something that is absolutely, you know, we're resistant to? Right. And oftentimes with time and advice, and a little bit it of common sense. Make it, happen. it does happen, absolutely. Now, what about the separation? 95% of cases settle. That's a very high statistic. That is good. So yeah. when you know that, you know, it's just a question of how long are you gonna go through the process and how much are the lawyers gonna make? You're eventually gonna settle. The odds are you're gonna so have to settle. So do it now, get it over with, right? Yeah. That's what I think. One of, one of them just asked, um, uh, Nanette said, does a spouse, it's really kind of does a spouse have to share an in inheritance if it was attained after marriage of 20 That years. is such a common question, and I'm going to put everyone's mind at ease right now. <laughs> Inheritance is never marital property. Ever. If you get, ever, if you really? have, I'm gonna, but I'm going to explain the mistakes people make. If you get a gift from your parents while you're alive, or an inheritance from your aunt 
or whatever it is. It is never shared with your wife or husband unless you're foolish enough to stick it in a joint bank account. Right. As long as you're careful, the law so has... So you get it so you should have a separate bank account? Yes. I mean, and, and yeah, okay, and you can put that in trouble for your children. Absolutely. New York law is crystal wow. clear on that topic. There is no gray area. So once you put it in there, that's it? Once you keep it out of the marital estate, and right. sometimes even people make mistakes, they commingle funds, it's called commingling, right. you can still get your inherited funds out of that joint account. Uh, the point is not to make the mistake in the first place because right. it gets messy. Yeah. If you're smart enough to get an inheritance and keep it out of your spouse's name, it is never gonna enter the picture unless it's such a big amount that it might give rise to child support or right. maybe right. the judge will consider it as part of other factors because obviously having one side have millions and the other side has nothing, it changes a little bit of the picture. Okay. But it's not shared property. It never ever is. And the same thing is even without a prenup. If you own a house before your marriage, and you don't put your spouse's name on it, and you don't live in that house, and you rent it out, that is never gonna be marital property. That okay. is separate property. But those are all good, good advice things. It's good advice because yeah. it gives people anxiety. Uh, you should definitely check with an attorney to ask right. these types of questions. Better yet, do a prenuptial agreement, or a post- a prenup, I like that. Or Everything's a prenup with you, I like that. But, but it's true. I think, well, myself, protect- myself for the NFL, you know what I told them? I said, listen, you know what? You're, you're, you're dating, whatever it is. Look, you, you're gonna think this is crazy, but I turned around, I said, for every kid you have, I said, you're young, 17%, think about it. Two kids, 25%. Right. Three kids, 32. No, no, four. three kids, 29%. Oh, 20, I'm sorry. <laughs> four kids, 32. I'm sorry, but I said, I skipped yeah, yeah, one no, uh, So I turned around and I said to him, I said, look, you know what I think you should do? And I know my friends are like, when they really thought about it, they're like, it's a good idea. I said, now, you could snip yourself. No, no, listen, <laughs> listen, so, listen, you could snip yourself because now it's reversible. It's a lot more reversible it than it was yes, years ago. But sometimes so it might not. So this is what you do. Then you go to a bank, you make whatever little deposit, you always have it there. Wait a second, you left, but you always have it there. Now, God forbid, I mean, say, you know, of course, women will say that they're pregnant, whatever it is, especially if you're a celebrity. But if you're in love with this person, say you decide to get married, you want to have a family. Yeah. So now you go to the doctor, you try and reverse. Sure. Now, even if it doesn't work, to re- the reversal aspect of this, you still have it at the bank. I actually want to talk about that. Or is that, or is yeah. that crazy? Does no, that no, sound no, crazy? No, it's, you're, you're really, oh, uh, okay. really on to something. <laughs> oh, I like that. Oh, my goodness. You hear that, right, <laughs> Devin? You hear that? First of all, child support is not in a prenup. You cannot have child support in a prenup. Right. That's off the table. The other thing is you can do a post-nup. A post-nup is the same as a prenup. You just sign it after the wedding. So a lot of times things like inheritance or a house or commingled assets or loans. So you can marry the guy and then tell him? Well, sometimes people <laughs> fight. Why do you want to post You marry the guy and you tell him. Post-ups right. and prenups are great because people still like each other. They want to be fair. And then you sign these agreements that calm things down. And I make very little money on post-ups and prenups. I make much more money in litigated divorces, right? right. Mm-hmm. But it is the right advice. It is the way to keep okay. things. Well, that's good to know. Record. But on the subject of fertility, which is like the cutting edge of family law. Oh, here we and go. I'm actually published on this topic. I just wrote about it because the new thing is fertility agreements, where you can have a sperm donor, right. you can have a surrogate, because New York State just passed surrogacy law. Starting in February, you can hire a woman to have a baby for you. Right. Like it's, I hate to be crude, but like rent a uterus. Right. That's really what it comes down to. It sounds good. It's a great thing for gay couples. It's a right. great thing for older moms. For working well, the time, it's popular now. And it's, it's just becoming legal now. And the reason why it took so long is because they wanted to protect the rights of the surrogate. So you do the law right. for that too? Yeah, we're going to do Rent a uterus? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we can well, I'm also, I can't rent I'm off anymore. Of, I'm, I'm the subject of sperm donations. This is also a very growing area of law because really? it's exactly the reason you said it. Because there are, we, we got a call, we got a call today, I swear to God, from a, a someone who wanted to discuss um, a sperm donation from a platonic friend who wanted to donate his sperm for her to have a baby and he was concerned about child support. Right. We have other situations where uh, people want to co-parent, they don't want to live together, right. and they want to make arrangements that are, you know, for cohabitation or for fertility agreements right. or frozen embryos. This is the new frontier of family law. That's wonderful. It's, it's, it's something that millennials are interested in. It is, you know, the rate of marriage is going right. down. Yes. And, you know, it's, it's a concern for people that are working and want to delay parenting. 
So you are very smart to bring that up because you're gonna hear more and more about it, especially in New York State, because the surrogacy law was just passed. Well, you're very up see, on you know, this, you're very like, modern. Now listen, yes. see now, I, I, I told, you know, I, I tell everybody this story. Now, it's my world, what I'm gonna say to you, it's my bubble, okay? Okay, and I've said it to many, many people. Okay. Now, I would love to have 30 to 40 kids. He's crazy. Now, listen to me. But uh, listen, it's my world now, guys. Okay. Look, look, she's taking a drink now. Please. I am, I'm okay. I she goes, I'm definitely going to be your attorney on this one. Look, look. All right, I would love to have 30 or 40 kids by a different woman. But now listen, again, it's my world. But do you have children now? So, no, no, yeah, I have four, but, but, I, but I have to tell you. So, no, 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 not right now, no, no, What I would love to do is, okay, I look at you, I look at you, I look at you, I look at you, and I go, all right. But this is the stipulation. This is what has to happen. Of course, we work and we, you know, we have to, we have to make the baby. Okay. Now, the baby has to have your looks, all of you, my height and my brain. Okay. See, because I know my brain. I don't care if you're a doctor, lawyer, attorney, whatever. Doesn't matter. I know my brain. So what I want is, afterwards, I'm there with you and, and doing all the all the work in the, in the in the room. And as soon as that beautiful child comes out. You hand me that child, the bundle of joy right there, and then I pull out my wallet and I write a check and I give it to you and tell you go away. But that's surrogacy, that's exactly yeah, what I just but said. I, but I would love to have 40 different children, I mean, if I could. Right, right. I mean, that's, that's how much I love the children, it's just the women I can do without. I understand. I mean, do you understand me? I, mean, I think that's, you know. Uh, you know, yeah, so to just explain what's going on in our society, uh, these types of arrangements where people are actually <laughs> foregoing marriage, they're really not sure if they want to have a lifelong commitment. They don't necessarily want to share income and assets, but they want to become parents. Right. This new surrogacy law, I don't know about 40 children, but it will make it possible. Oh, it will no. make it possible to, you know. But that's good to it know. It can't be buying a baby. It really, that's the whole point. No, it has to be no, 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 but, no, no, a but, separate but adoption. Understand, no, but understand what I'm right. saying. You know, right. It's just something that I wish, I, I mean, you can have babies made to order where you can have them blue eyes and yeah. whatever it is. It's well, crazy is, the way they do it. I don't know if it's there yet, but No, yes. they said in, in Europe, yeah, in it's, Europe, it's $150,000 just for that one thing. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, they do with their X, the Y, G, do whatever it is. Well, and I'm like, wow. I know, and I do have a lot of, uh, you know, I, I talk to couples all the time and individuals that do frozen embryos. You can, at this point, in New York, choose the sex of your child. Right. Because once you create an embryo, Right, right, male exactly. Yeah. Female. So that's as far as uh, yeah, you can do that. that blue idea. eyes and other things. I mean, that I don't know. Yeah. I don't know that we're there yet. Okay. There's a lot of ethical issues with right, that. Right. Yeah. Uh, this country has a lot of concerns about well, trafficking. Well, I don't know if it's going to be here family. yet, but I know in Canada and also yeah. Europe they're doing it. Yeah. So I have a question. Now, was it true that you have to separate first? It's, that's okay. the way you have to do so it. Let me give a little rundown. Okay. So, uh, and I talk about this. It's one of the reasons why I wrote the book is that there's been a lot of changes in New York law. law over the past decade. And one of them is, the main thing is no fault divorce. You don't need to be separated for a year. You don't need grounds anymore. It, the judges frankly don't care about adultery or cruelty or abandonment anymore. They don't care? No, because- That's not right. Because unless it impacts custody, right. I'm not gonna say it's not a credibility or character issue, potentially, right. but 99 plus percent of cases that we do in our practice are no fault divorce because the courts do not go into grounds anymore. We don't do like jury trials. Like if you on one Does or matter an issue of proof. And no, no, no. So, yeah. And it used to be a one-year separation waiting period. That's and what I thought. got rid of that. So then you could get divorced and you right. could you have to be. You have to wait six months after the marriage. And then you have to claim basically a rec reconcilable differences. Oh. It's no fault. Oh, no fault. You, okay. you really, it's really not a negative ground. It's like we don't get along. All right, it's so not contested anymore. It's not something that feels negative. I want a divorce. Yeah, well, I'm not, you know, I'm a widow, so. Uh, but, so but, the no-fault divorce grounds have really made it a lot easier to go through the process. It's taken away a lot of the stigma. Mm -hmm. A lot of older couples that get divorced now, we don't have to prove infidelity. We don't have to make allegations about abandonment. Right. You know, it's, it's just a, it's a, it's boiler just, plate. You know, oh. What about um, who leaves the house? How does that work out? It's a home. Okay, Who so leaves? the number gets one, to go. I want everyone listening to hear me on this. The number one advice we give clients that own a home, especially if there are children in the home, and you own the home, is you cannot leave. You cannot move out of a house and leave children behind without talking to your lawyer. People make this mistake all the time. 
Please don't do it. It's very hard to fix it, and I'll give you the reasons why. First of all, if you own a home, it's still a marital asset. You're not right. giving up the rights to the value of the home. But if you move out, and your wife or husband changes the locks, which they can do after a period of time, you're not going to be able to get back in. You're not going to be able to get your stuff. And right. stuff goes missing all the time. Suddenly, you know, the thing you want is missing. Right. Right. You can't get into the garage to get your stuff. And so you surrender the ability to reside there and retrieve your property. So that's a big deal. But more importantly, if you have children in the home and you move out, you've more or less given up custody of your children to the spouse that's still in the house. And even worse than that, you're now liable for child support because you right. moved out. Okay. You might be still liable to pay the mortgage. I mean, all kinds of reasons. It's such a really? big mistake. And at the same time, I always tell people, find another bedroom, live in the basement. Right. You know, Make it happen. Lock work, the bedroom work against right. the privacy. Right. But because really, I speak to couples all the time, individuals all the time, that are literally going out of their minds. They're living in a, in a house. They're going crazy. There's fighting going on. There's children watching. And of course, it makes sense, let me move out. But you really can't do that because the implications are so serious. So speak to a lawyer. Maybe there needs to be some ground rules. Maybe you need to create a parenting schedule. Yes, right. And maybe you can sign an agreement that says, I'm moving out, but I have joint custody. Right. Or I'm moving out, but I don't have to pay anything more than I already am on the house. Right. Obviously, if you're very wealthy, it's much easier to Yeah, of course. But well, the money person, talks, bullshit doesn't. Right, for the average yeah. person, it's a big, big, big right. mistake. As a matter of fact, in my book, it's the top tip. Can I say the top tip? Do not move out without speaking to a lawyer. Really? The number one tip, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be sharing this with a lot of my breakfast club people. Absolutely. Divorce reality yeah, check. Like the breakfast club people who's getting divorced. They're, they're uh, like 75 and come on, stop. Yeah, they okay. weren't all that old. Not I, that old, I'm just saying. I, can I just also say, I, I think it's I important. love it. I think it's important to say, I'm married 30 years. But God I, bless you. I believe in marriage. I talk a lot of people out of divorce. It's not always the answer. It really isn't. As a matter of fact, you can go from the frying pan into the fire. That's right. And I always keeper. say, because I am traditional, I mentioned my parents are Middle Eastern. Uh, you know, the only thing that cannot be is domestic violence. Right. Almost right. any other type of issue potentially can be resolved. That's what marriage counselors are for. You know, including a dead marriage where there hasn't been intimacy for a while, including infidelity, including financial issues, and right. mental illness. I mean, there are ways potentially to address those issues. And I do tell clients, before you file, you know, have you talked to your rabbi? Have you talked to a pastor? Have you gone to a counselor? Right. Are you sure this is the right move? Right. And sometimes it's not. That's where the post-ups come in. Yeah, this is when maybe we wait until our children are older. Maybe we want to think of other things. You know, I want to mention COVID also. Yes. It's causing a lot of upheaval in families. Definitely. The divorce rate is predicted to go up. There is definitely more violence. Definitely people drinking, fighting, uh, relocating. There are people picking up and moving. And, and you know, there's, there's lots a lot. of things going on right now. There and is. At the same time, some marriages have become stronger. And so ultimately, I, I, I really try to recommend to clients that you make a decision from a rational mind, not an emotional mind. Well, I'll tell and you, you're terrific. Thank you. I mean, I, if I were fighting in the right. divorce, I'd be well, there tomorrow. I, 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 we, we, can, we can be on here. Uh, yeah, this is amazing. Well. Don't invite me back. A lot of great no, definitely, information. Definitely, definitely. Really I, I great definitely want to thank you. Thank you. Then and before the book. we go, and the book. Now, where can we get a hold of your book? Uh, yeah, it's on Amazon. Okay. But honestly, I give out a lot of information at no charge. Okay, great. Clients want me to send them things. And they can reach you. Including this handout. You can yes, I'm going to take some. Okay. You can All find right, me on LinkedIn. You can and also find look, me on yeah, also look at it, look at our page, and we'll have our address and everything on there for yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to give Paulie three-year anniversary, buddy. I'm, I, Christine, I don't know how the hell you did it with Paulie all these years. I swear to you, I would have killed him myself. Which right one, now. Poochie? Paulie B. Paulie B. Paulie B. Yeah. What is he married three years? Three yeah. years. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. You didn't need to know that. No, I didn't know he was married. There you go. Okay. All right. <laughs> this is why we have attorneys. All right. No. Anyway. Um. And Kathy, Kathy Williams, paparazzi jewelry. She's gonna be live at 7:30 tonight. Guys, you gotta support her. She's trying really, really hard. Yeah, and this you is know one what? of hers. It's, it's, she's a sweetheart. She comes to the club. She's a breakfast club member. She's a Everybody. dear friend. She's always there when you need her. She'll always pick up the phone. She'll, she'll sell you. She'll listen to me. She'll even deliver this stuff to you. Yes, I mean, she That's will. how good she is. And, and she, she really she is. Be, we're and talking of her co into buying your jewelry. Yeah, I'm telling you. That's right. <laughs> that's right. She's great. And the husband, he's a wonderful guy giving you a shout out too. So 
Guys, we have to thank our sponsor. Who is our sponsor here? We, uh, all yeah. hero, which is we have to say. Well, you always look like, where is it? Oh, stop. Okay. It's right here. This is what I need. Okay. Yeah, this is look I need. at this. Here. Okay. Look what I got for you. Here. Yay. Look what I got for you. <laughs> oh, thank you, my love. It's, it's so mine. Sweet. I'm taking it thank off. You. Isn't that great, yeah. though, for a nightlight? Yeah. Strong light. Anything she could take, it's great. This okay. is great. I love yeah. it. Yeah, okay, good. Anyway, so. <laughs> Tranquility Spa, we want to thank you so much. 700 Franklin Avenue, a great place to have a massage, to relax yourself, foot massage, all that great stuff. Uh, Oro Puro, Teddy and Christine, we love you. They have every kind of jewelry uh, under the sun. I and love if they it. don't have it, they can make it. Uh, Rivers Cafe, Abigail, I love you. I know we're going to see you really, really soon. And Gil, I am going to make a bigger pocket in my back of my jeans so I can put you in there and I can carry you around. Because he's a great guy. He's like four foot. He's like the biggest heart in the world. Vinny from Rose Saruso Restaurant. Buddy, we love you. We're going to come see you soon. And QS2 Training. Everyone should learn how to do CPR because it's something that's really, really important. And you never know whose life you might save. Absolutely. You know, if I saw her choking, I would watch her first and I think. And I think, yeah. what do you have to do before you choke? Just you think. Know, you like two minutes? I would be like, like a minute she's making out with there you. you. <laughs> See, this is I why we don't do CPR. I finally get to make out with she it. She turns around, she turns around, you see the good looking guy, she's like, eh, eh. <laughs> <laughs> What are those, okay? Killer man, see me here. No, but uh, anyway, thank you so much for being here. Yes, on and really you are going it. to the spa. Yeah, oh. definitely. You're going to Franklin Square, you tell them that we sent you. Oh, nice. And thank you'd you. be very treated very well. That's it. And the prices that you'll pay is like one eighth of what it costs. Yeah, definitely. And so, John Gregory, my son, thanks for watching. I love you, honey. And I know you're just watching because you're trying to remind me to get you an Xbox 25 gift card. I know uh, what you're doing. Okay. <laughs> I am your father, I know. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> I love and, you. Yeah. Eddie, thanks also for watching. And uh, Nanette, thank you. I know you have to, uh, if you can, just go on the page. And if you have to ask her any questions, please feel free. She'll answer all your questions. Any questions. And I'll have, I'll have this and, basic right. steps. I can email to sure. anyone. And, and I'll put that up. Virgin, and there's a lot. Well, you'll, you'll be able to pronounce them. You'll see okay, after. Then. No and uh, Jessica, thank you for watching. Uh, Mahan and Susan, again, thank you again. We love you. And Susan, I'll probably see you later tonight. All right, hun? And, and I want to say, oh, just sorry. in case people don't know, there's a new program. It's called Project Hope. It's for emotional support for people with COVID. And it's really important. And it's very easy. You just call the Emotional Support Helpline for Project Hope. Crisis, 844-863-4314. I'll be posting this on my website. And, you know, it could be something like that's bothering you. It could be yeah. like what I'm going through. Yeah, my like sister. <laughs> no, my sister. Oh, she's calling me a traitor because she thinks that I'm voting for the wrong person. And I have to get through that. So it could be you anything. Have, you need to call that because if your I sister need to, called you a traitor look, because for politics? You never know. If I need to talk to someone, I could talk to Project Hope. Okay, that's good, but I'm just, okay. Thank you so much, and you know what? It's a... That's a wrap. Thank you.